Hi Venture 4th and 5th grade, this is Miss Michelle. Man, I miss you guys so much. We're outside in my backyard. It's just so nice to be out here in the fresh air. I hope you guys are doing well and I hope that um, if you need anything, please let me know and I'm here to pray with you. All right, so let's get started on this week's lesson. This is the last week of the ultimate. Now we've been going four weeks into it and this is our last week of learning about how Jesus is the ultimate in our lives. As we get ready to wrap up our ultimate series, let's take another look at our graphic of this series. There's a word written in Hebrew here. Let's zoom in on it. It's a name for God. Say it if you know it. On the count of three, one, two, three. Adonai. This is a name of God. He's the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Or he's the ultimate ruler of the universe. God is the ultimate authority. He's the ultimate reality. Now let's quickly look at some verses in our Bible. So you're gonna wanna grab your Bible. I'll wait just a few seconds here. Go run and grab your Bible. And we're gonna open up our Bibles. And we're gonna talk about some other ways that Adonai is the ultimate. Let's turn in our Bibles to Colossians chapter one, verses 16. So you're gonna to wanna to grab your Bibles out because we're gonna open them right now in the New Testament. So if you can turn there to Colossians chapter one, verse 16, and I'll go ahead and read that. And it says, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. In verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Wow, so that's an awesome verse showing us that God is the ultimate. God is so awesome. In fact, God is ultimate in so many ways. Ephesians 3.20, it talks to us about how he can do better than we can imagine. The Bible says that in Isaiah 55.9, his thoughts are beyond our thoughts. Job 5.9 says that he does great and unsearchable things and wonders without number. Philippians 4.7 says that Adonai has a peace that goes beyond understanding. Let's look at Romans 11, verse 33 through 34. How very rich are God's wisdom and knowledge. How he judges is more than we can understand. The way he deals with people is more than we can know. Who can ever know what the Lord is thinking? Or who can ever give him advice? Since January, we've been looking at the book of Luke. And we've been looking at what God is showing us about himself through Jesus. We started Luke chapter 2. And we looked at the birth of Jesus. Each week we were seeing different pictures of Jesus. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember drawing pictures of Jesus each week? Now during the series, this one right now that we're going through, The Ultimate, we've continued to move through the book of Luke. And we looked at chapter 19, 20, and 21. But let's take a quick look back at all those wonderful pictures that you all drew of pictures of Jesus.
those were some really awesome pictures. I'm so glad we did that and I'm so glad we were able to just check out that video. Now let's move on. So we're gonna look at, in Luke 22, Jesus taught something totally surprising to his disciples. Now, his disciples were having dinner with Jesus, and that was Jesus' last dinner before he died on the cross. And some say, and some call it the Last Supper. Now, during that dinner time, the disciples, his followers, broke out into an argument. Let's read what happened next after that argument broke out. Now pay attention to what Jesus said about being the ultimate. We spent so much time this month talking about how Jesus is the ultimate, okay? But this passage is gonna tell us how we can be the ultimate in his kingdom. So let's look at Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 27. They also started to argue they disagreed about which of them was thought to be the most important person. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles hold power over their people, and those who order them around call themselves protectors. But you must not be like that. Instead, the most important among you should be like the youngest. The one who rules should be like the one who serves. Who is more important? Is it the one at the table or the one who serves? Isn't it the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. What is Jesus saying here about being the greatest in God's kingdom? How do you become the ultimate? Well, the answer is by being one who serves. Jesus was telling his disciples, hey, if you wanna be great in my kingdom, it's not to be some powerful person over here. It's about being a servant to all. You have to go and you have to serve people if you wanna be great in my kingdom. Now, Jesus was explaining to his followers that you become the greatest in his kingdom by loving others to the point of serving them. Again, if you want to be the ultimate in God's kingdom, you need to love others and serve others. Let's take a look at this picture here. Hours before he was arrested and hung on the cross to die, Jesus had dinner with his disciples. It's sometimes called the Last Supper. Jesus and his followers probably wore shoes that were more like sandals. Walking around on the dirt streets they had back then would have made their feet dirty as they walked from place to place. When they came together to have this last meal together, somebody needed to wash off their dirty feet before they ate dinner. This was the job of a servant in those days. But Jesus, on the last night before he was arrested and killed, got down on his knees and washed his disciples' dirty, stinky feet. Jesus didn't just tell us that the greatest would be the one who serves. He showed us what it would look like. Then he told his disciples to act the same way toward one another, to serve one another. Now the world teaches us that the ultimate person is the one sitting there getting served. But Jesus is teaching us that to be the ultimate and to be the greatest is the one that is doing the serving, the one that is washing the feet. If you want to be the ultimate, like Jesus is the ultimate, he says serving others should be your goal in life. Serve others out of love and you will be the ultimate you. I just want to end by saying I miss you guys and our leaders miss you. So I do have a few leaders that wanted to say hello and I'll end with that, that you can watch their video of them saying hello to you. Just some quick reminders. Don't forget Psalm 91 verses one through three. Let's memorize it. I'm gonna check in on you guys next week to see how we're doing for our next Zoom meeting. It's going to be May 3rd at one o'clock, same time. I wanna see if we can all memorize it by then. So that way I can just take a snapshot of it or even a quick video and just share it around uh, Venture because I know a lot of people will be blessed by hearing all of you preteens spreading the word of God and just sharing the word of God. I miss you guys and I can't wait to see you again. God bless you.
Bye. Hey preteens, it's Miss Nika here, and I just wanted to talk to y'all this week and say hi. I also wanted to read you guys a verse from the Bible. So if you turn to Psalms 90, 12. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. So pretty much what this verse is telling us is the key word, wisdom. Just really look into your heart and look into God's wisdom that he will lead us through this darkness and that we will be let through him and that he will be working through us every single day and just thank him for everything that he's done and I know it's hard to stay at home and not be with your friends or go to church but really just dive inside yourself and look to God. Hi preteens, how are you? This is Miss Irene saying hello. I hope that you guys are doing well, staying healthy and uh, keeping up with your schoolwork. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys today about my uh, devotional. Today it was about Psalm 56 and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, share with you what it says. And so as David is on the run and he decides to flee to Gath, um, while he was there, he pretends uh, to be insane so that the Philistines um, or Philistines will not kill him. And um, it also talks about how David um, went from weeping to praise, from fear to faith. He's expecting and trusting that the Lord will help him during this time. Uh, we know that this type of emotions, um, many times it is what we are feeling right now. Um, I know that there are moments where we are very fearful and then, um, you know, we feel like it's going to be okay. But God reminds us that um, we need to trust in Him. We need to have faith and I just pray that you guys will be able to remember that um, it is okay to have those feelings. God gave us those feelings. Hi, 4th and 5th, it's Amanda here. Um, I really miss seeing you guys on Sundays. Um, and until we can meet each other, I want to share a word of encouragement for you. Um, I turn to Psalm 46 when I'm feeling low and overwhelmed with work, with, you know, different things happening in my life. And the shelter in place and the outbreak has been one of those many things that have been a real burden on me personally. And so I wanted to read to you Psalm 46. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. And verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And I have to remind myself those two simple words, be still. Sometimes I get so overwhelmed and I feel like, what can I do to make my situation better? But really, I don't have to do anything. I just have to rely on God and be still because I know that He can do anything. Well, I know this week you guys are going to be talking about serving one another. And so I want to share a way that my mom and I are actually serving our local community. So as you know, we are being asked to wear masks when we go out in public to protect other people. Um, and if you or your parents have been to the stores lately, it's been a little bit difficult to find masks on the grocery shelves, just like toilet paper, right? So while my mom and I can't sew toilet paper, we've been sewing fabric masks like this and they just kind of go on your face and loop over your ears. Um, and so what we've been doing is reaching out to our community and our friends, old friends, family members, um, and creating these fabric masks and sending them out. And we've been going through my fabric stash because I love to sew. Here's my Bible cover, which has Ariel on it. Um, and it's, it's just been a, a really rewarding um, activity for me to do personally. Um, it's been just really saddening for me to hear of how people are going to the grocery stores and they can't find things that they need. And so we wanted to just make at least one thing easier for our local community. And so we've been sending out these masks to people. It's been a really great way to connect to people that you've never talked to before. And also I've connected with friends who I haven't talked to since I was in elementary school. And I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, but it's been a while. Um, so I wanna encourage you to try to find a way that you can serve one another 
other during the shelter in place. It can be calling up a friend and asking them if they're doing okay, checking in on your neighbor. You know, you can even check in on your family members, check in with your parents, um, check in with a sibling, maybe send mail out through snail mail, put an actual stamp on a letter and put that in your mailbox. It's really fun to do. Um, so I hope that you can find some way to encourage one another and to serve one another even though we're stuck at home and i can't wait to see you guys soon and until then please make sure to stay safe and take care of yourselves i will see you guys later